the nightly business report good evening tonight the sri lankan tourism promotion bureau secures the accolade for the best international tourism board at the global tourism awards 2024 chairman shalaka gajabahu states that this recognition is a significant success for the nation during these challenging times uh, it was a huge success for us after especially what we have what we went through uh, two years ago especially with the economic crisis before that the covid pandemic and our recovery Sri Lanka's tech landscape experiences a new milestone with the introduction of the nation's first conversational artificial intelligence robot. The positive momentum that concluded last week at the Colombo stock market shifted at the start of this week with today's trading sessions resulting in losses. And CrowdStrike rejects Delta Airlines claim that it should be blamed for flight disruptions following a global outage on the 19th of July. From Studio 24 Here's Vinuth Wanasuriya. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Sri Lankan Tourism Promotion Bureau won the Best International Tourism Board Accolade at the Global Tourism Awards 2024 held in New Delhi, India on the 2nd of August 2024. The Global Tourism Awards is an annual event organized by Travel World Online which serves as a platform to honor and celebrate organizations that have made outstanding contributions to the tourism industry. shaping its landscape and driving positive change this year's event was particularly special as it comprised of various categories and a large number of applicants across the world this award was presented to mr chalaka gajabahu the chairman of the sltpb with the presence of honorable harin fernando the minister of tourism lands sports and youth affairs Sri Lanka tourism has attracted over 1 million tourists up to 31st of July of this year, which is a 56% increase over 2023 and is confident of accomplishing its target of 2.3 million tourists this year. Speaking to the Nightly Business Report, Mr. Chalaka Gajabahu, the chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, stated that this represents a significant milestone for the Sri Lankan tourism industry. Actually it is an iconic uh, day today not today last friday where sri lanka tourism promotion bureau under the uh, ministry of tourism won the best international tourist uh, uh, board in new delhi uh, it was a huge success for us after especially what we have what we went through uh, two years ago especially with the economic crisis before that the covid pandemic and our recovery based on that uh, about 10 countries applied for this uh, title to be the best international tourist board uh, in the world in new delhi Uh, Sri, uh, along with South Africa, Vietnam, Indonesia, Nepal, and few other countries in, entered for this category. Uh, our main pitch point was our recovery. Yes, of course, all those countries went through the COVID pandemic, but Sri Lanka, especially in, when it came to tourism, because of the economic crisis, we had a red alert all over the world. In each country, we had travel warnings not to visit Sri Lanka because of the new uh, stress that we had because of the fuel crisis, the food crisis, the medicine crisis. But then, how we showed them. how we made the recovery with this uh, black mark we had all over the world especially from a business to consumer point of view uh, we started with business to business with road shows in countries like india and china and at at the same time taking part in a few travel shows a strategic travel shows to show how we are doing as a country the main purpose was the business to consumer reach business to consumer reach was done through a, see, a campaign called seeing is believing even though we did this campaign we didn't publish size it here what we did was within the past 2 years or so we have got about 200 influencers coming into sri lanka uh, well uh, well known influencers like nas daily uh, the culinary expert tom cook and lot of bollywood artists as well in about from about 15 to 20 countries we started doing this these familiarization tours and bloggers and vloggers from all over the world for them to see rather than doing a campaign to say come and visit sri lanka we want to make people believe that sri lanka is back to normal and you know especially from a tourism perspective we are doing very well that's why we have recovered in a very well, very good manner uh, in 2023 Uh, we almost achieved 1.5 million which was our target we ended up with 1.49 million but this year our target of 2.3 million we are well on our way to achieve that target of 2.3 million as of now as of uh 31st of july we are at 1.2 million so another uh, 1.1 million to go in uh, in 5 months don't forget uh, winter is coming october november december that's going to be very good i hope uh, we will uh, will uh, create a peaceful uh, you know uh, uh, impact uh, with the elections as well uh, for tourists to come uh, in a positive manner to sri lanka 
Media reports say that Sri Lanka's Department of Immigration will soon take a decision on providing e-visas after the service provided by IVS, GBF and VFS Global, a private consortium, was suspended by court. Sri Lanka has shut an electronic visa application site run by consortiums involving companies called VFS Global, IVS and GBS after a court order suspended the contract awarded without competitive tender. A statement on the front page of the website shows a statement mentioning we have been notified of certain interim orders issued by the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka today pertaining to the agreement under which this platform is operated. Airport officials said that the Department of Immigration continued to issue on arrival visas physically to tourists from eligible countries. The controversial deal was awarded without public tender and led to higher fees being charged for visas on top of government fees. There was no immediate information on when the old site would be restored. Department sources said a decision is likely to be taken next week. Mobitel was charging $1 for the service while VFS Global was charging different prices ranging from $10 to $18.05 and more depending on the category of the visa. Data from the Coconut Development Authority shows that Sri Lanka's average coconut prices fell from 85,516 to 85,087 for 1,000 nuts at an auction on the 1st of August 2024. The highest price was 92,000, down from 95,000 for 1,000 nuts, while the lowest was 77,000, down from 78,500 for 1,000 nuts. A total of 573,886 coconuts were offered at the auction and 550,139 were sold. Wholesale prices were 100 to 110 rupees for large nuts and 85 to 90 rupees for small nuts on the 1st of August. Farm gate prices in Kurunagala were 80,000 to 82,000 per 1,000 nuts. Coconut oil was 660,000 to 700,000 rupees per metric ton. Coconut shells were 33,000 to 34,000 rupees per metric ton. An official said that India is seeking customs duty concessions on a number of goods, including cars, commercial vehicles and machinery from Sri Lanka, under comprehensive free trade agreement talks which are underway. The official said that India has also sought earlier visa norms to further facilitate the entry of professionals from here. The 14th round of talks between senior officials from India and Sri Lanka was concluded recently in Colombo. Issues which came up for the talks included rules of origin, goods, services and technical barriers for trade. The official said that as elections are announced in Sri Lanka, the next round of negotiations between the two countries will be held after that. The two nations have already implemented a free trade agreement in goods and now they're negotiating to expand the pact by including more goods and services. The India-Sri Lanka free trade agreement came into force in March of 2000. It enhanced economic relations between the two countries by reducing tariffs on a wide range of goods. Let's go for a short commercial break. Stock market updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The positive sentiment that concluded last week at the Colombo stock market ended at the beginning of this week with two days trading sessions ending in losses. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 recorded losses at the end of today's market session returning to the negative trajectory. To get a summary on today's trading performance, we now turn to Anjali Matthews joining us from First Capital Holdings. Yes, Vinod. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange struggled to keep the momentum of the previous week as both indices closed the day in red as a result of the banking sector counters and conglomerates dragging indices down heavily amidst uncertainties surrounding the upcoming election. The All Share Price Index closed at 11,251, falling by 100 and 191 points from the previous day. And similarly, the S&P SL20 index also experienced a sharp drop, losing 75 points to close at 3,214. Notably, Commercial Bank experienced some selling pressure ahead of the final day of the renunciation of its rights shares tomorrow. 
As negative sentiment persisted, there was mixed participation amongst high net worth and retail investors, causing turnover to close at Rs 863.9 million, marking a 13.8% decrease from the monthly average. The top gainers of the day include SMB Finance, Haley's Fiber and Asia Capital, while the top losers were Commercial Bank Rights, Commercial Bank Rights 1 and SMB Finance Non-Voting. The week began in the negative territory at the Colombo Stock Exchange and will this trend impact the remainder of the week? We pose this question to Dimanta Matthews joining us from First Capital Holdings. Thanks. So, uh, the market has been on a bit of a volatile note over the last couple of weeks. Even today we saw a huge uh, decline in the market uh, similar to the uh, global trend. Uh, however, uh, what we think is that um, in the upcoming uh, week, uh, it will be a similar volatility is likely to uh, be there in the market because of the current uh, uncertain environment uh, that is uh, existing, especially on the political front. Uh, the earnings season is also upcoming, but earnings is likely to be good. Uh, however, the market is uh, unlikely to react to the earnings that is uh, coming out. So uh, with that, uh, we can see that the investors are starting to stay away from the market, especially the buying in the market is, uh, has uh, declined uh, significantly. Uh, there's a bit more uh, selling pressure uh, in the market at the moment and that trend is likely to uh, continue and uh, accelerate. So you can see a lot of uh, volatility in the upcoming week. And also turnover levels wise, uh, we believe that uh, it could be rather slow in terms of turnover. Retail activity is likely to be uh, negligible. However, there could be some amount of uh, bargain hunters that may uh, come uh, into the market uh, on and off. And uh, with that, uh, there could be a bit of uh, buying interest uh, that may uh, come. However. Uh, that will be ra also be rather slow. So uh, with that uh, we feel that overall environment is uh, likely to be on a uh, uncertain side. Gold prices dropped again in volatile trade today as profit taking countered support from increasing expectations from a rate cut from the Federal Reserve amid concerns over US recession which led to a worldwide sell off in financial markets. Spot gold fell 0.4% to $2,433.74 per ounce. Bullion had slipped 1% earlier in the session before rising as much as 0.7%. U.S. gold futures edged up 0.2% to $2,475.30. Markets are in a flux about the U.S. economic outlook and whether the rate cuts will arrive quickly enough from the Federal Reserve. Oil prices fell today as fears of a recession in the United States, the world's top oil consumer, offset concerns that escalating tensions in the Middle East may affect supplies from the largest producing region. Brent crude futures dropped 53 cents or 0.7 percent to $76.28 a barrel. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were down by 57 cents or 0.6 percent at $72.95. Brent crude and WTI tumbled more than 3 percent on Friday, with both contracts marking their fourth straight week of losses, the biggest losing streak since November. The Sri Lankan rupee remains steady against the US dollar today compared to last week, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar remained at 297 rupees and 64 cents, while the selling rate dropped from 306 rupees and 93 cents to 306 rupees and 65 cents. Now let's observe the rupees exchange rates against the other global currencies.
a short break now corporate world coming on the other side this is the nightly business report Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Diversified conglomerate Sunshine Holdings PLC continued demonstrating resilience amidst prevailing macroeconomic conditions, reporting a top-line growth of 6.5% year-on-year. The group recorded a consolidated revenue of 14.2 billion rupees during the first quarter of the current financial year. The company's profit after tax contracted by 3.6% year on year to 1.4 billion rupees. The revenue increase was due to robust revenue growth in healthcare despite contraction in both consumer and agri sectors. The group's healthcare sector emerged as the largest contributor to Sunshine's top line, accounting for 53.1% of total revenue, followed by consumer at 32.4% and agri business at 14.5%. Group CEO Sham Sadasivan said that as they navigate through the first quarter of FY25, Sunshine Holdings remains steadfast in its commitment to resilience and innovation. He added that they are acutely aware of the ongoing economic challenges, particularly the impact of adjusted direct and indirect taxes on consumer disposable income, and have closely monitored these dynamics and implemented measures to adapt and thrive. The group's ability to post robust results amidst these conditions is a testament to our team's hard work and relentless pursuit of excellence. Sri Lanka's tech landscape is experiencing a significant movement with introduction of Pepper, the nation's first conversational artificial intelligence robot. This product is a collaborative effort between Anchor Technologies in Sri Lanka and Robot Lab Group in the United States. Pepper is already captivating young minds and reshaping the future of education in Sri Lanka. Children are expressing their happiness by experiencing such technology marvel right in front of their eyes. By seamlessly integrating ChatGPT, Pepper offers unprecedented access to human robot interaction and education programs. This enables students in Sri Lanka at the forefront of AI education, allowing students to engage with cutting edge technology firsthand. The cutting edge AI product had its initial launch in Kandy. Yesterday, it made a grand appearance at the Havelock City Mall in Colombo, where it engaged and interacted with numerous visitors. Anka Technologies is committed to creating an AI driven learning environment where students can explore the wonders of technology while they are schooling, and looking forward to seeing AI robots in schools, universities, hotels, airports, and banks. Thank you for watching the Nightly Business Report. Uber signed a memorandum of understanding with the Sri Lankan Tourism Promotion Bureau and the Ministry of Tourism to give a boost to the tourism in the country. Over the next few months, Uber will promote Sri Lanka as a tourist destination to its rider based in India, which accounts for one of the largest tourist inflow into the country. The partnership aims to help revive Sri Lankan tourism, which has been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and the recent economic crisis. Later this month, the Sri Lankan Tourism Promotion Bureau will organize roadshows in selected Indian cities to encourage tourists to visit Sri Lanka. As a part of the partnership, Uber will use its platform to promote Sri Lankan tourist spots and food delicacies to its wide customer base across India. Halis PLC, Sri Lanka's largest public listed diversified conglomerate, reported an economic value creation of 150 billion rupees parallel to the delivering progress on its sustainability targets over the last financial year. Accounting for a total of 5% of Sri Lanka's total export income, during the period in review, Haley's earned 591 million USD in foreign exchange income. As a net exporter, 54% of group revenue was generated from exports. The group distributed 138.6 billion rupees in cumulative economic value towards all stakeholders, including supplier development, government taxes, employee payments, lenders of capital and to shareholders, which is a 6.7% year-on-year increase. 
Haley's PLC chairman and chief executive Mohan Panditage said that the evolution of the Haley's group has been characterized by a singular commitment to drive value addition and excellence across all spheres of its operations. He added that they are proud of the progress being made to foster sustainable innovation and value-added export development while leveraging inclusive business models and a sincere commitment to driving circularity. Sunquick, a leading beverage company known for its dedication to quality and innovation, proudly announces its initiative to empower women in sports, highlighted by their support for the Sri Lankan women's cricket team, who recently clinched the Women's Asia Cup title. This effort parts to Sunquick's broader mission to promote women's athletic and encourage female participation in sports across Sri Lanka. As a key supporter, Sunquick played a pivotal role in the team's journey to victory. This backing highlights Sunquick's belief in potential and prowess the female athletes aiming to inspire and empower more women to engage in sports nationwide. The company is actively involved in various programs aimed at promoting women's sports, providing training facilities and supporting grassroots initiatives to nurture young talent. Let's take a short commercial break. Global updates right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Stock markets across Asia experienced a massive sell-off today while US stock futures also tumbled after last week's worse-than-expected US jobs report triggered renewed fears of recession. Japan's Nikkei 225 index was down more than 12.4% to 31,458.42 points late today afternoon. Other major global stock indexes were also hit, with South Korea's cost be falling nearly 8.9%. Stock markets have mostly been travelling in one direction, higher with relatively few huge swings this past year. CrowdStrike rejected a claim by Delta Airlines that it should be blamed for flight disruptions following a July 19 global outage sparked by a faulty update and suggested it had minimal potential liability. CrowdStrike says it's not to blame for the recent flight chaos in the US. The cybersecurity firm said Sunday it had minimal legal liability over the disruption in mid-July. Thousands of flights were cancelled after a faulty software update from the firm caused computers around the world to crash. Delta Airlines chief Ed Bastian has said the outage cost his firm $500 million and promised legal action to get compensation. The airline cancelled more than 6,000 flights over a six-day period, affecting more than half a million passengers. Over the weekend, CrowdStrike reiterated its apology. But in a letter from a lawyer, it also said it was disappointed by any allegation that it was negligent. The firm says it reached out to Delta to offer assistance when the outage occurred, but never heard back. Now it says the carrier should explain why it turned down free on-site help and why rival airlines were able to get their systems back online much more quickly. A CrowdStrike spokesperson said Delta should stop what it calls posturing about a meritless potential court case. There was no immediate response from the airline. With that, we mark the end of our first bulletin of the nightly business report for the week. Join us again tomorrow with more key updates from across the business globe. Until then, this is Vinod Varnasurya wishing you a good night.